Good morning, evening, friend. He's your friendly announcer. <laughs> and I got some serious news, too. Listen, y'all. Let me first of all say this. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. Whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on, let me welcome you to this damn crazy house where we talk about all this stuff that's nuts outside the mental institutions. Okay? So it makes you kind of want to think and rethink where you really at. Because this story is pretty good for y'all. And I. I, 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 first of all, I want to say congratulations. And this article was done by Brad Schratt, Schrade and Bill Rakin of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. I'm so happy. The former Glenn D.A. Johnson was arrested after indictment linked to the Ahmaud Aubrey case. Okay, so let me share this with you. Former District Attorney Jackie Johnson <laughs> who was indicted last week for allegedly misconduct in the aftermath of the Ahmaud Arbery shooting, turned herself in to the Glenn County Sheriff's Office on Wednesday morning and was booked into the jail in Brunswick. I'm so glad. She was then released, though, of course, from the Glenn County Detention Center on her own recognizance, meaning that she didn't have to post a $10,000 bond listed on her booking sheet. A grand jury indicted the former Brunswick Judicial Circuit prosecutor last Thursday on two counts following an inquiry by the FBI that had been called for by Georgia Attorney Chris Carr. That's the Attorney General, by the way. Johnson is charged with obstruction of a police officer, which is a misdemeanor. On the day of February 23rd, 2020, the shooting, the indictment says she allegedly instructed two Glenn County police officers not to arrest Travis McMichael, the man who shot and killed Aubrey. She is also indicted for allegedly by allegedly violating her oath of office, and that's a felony, for showing favor and affection to George McMichael, who is Travis McMichael's father, and is also charged in the case. Johnson failed to treat Amon Aubrey and his family fairly and with any type of dignity, dignity the indictment states. You know what she is. It rhymes with witch. Okay. Johnson also could not be reached by phone Wednesday, and she did not respond to a text seeking her comment. Her attorney, though, John Osick, did not respond to a message either. Johnson, 49, lost her bid for re-election last November after facing sharp criticism and calls for her ouster over the way she handled the Ahmaud Aubrey case. She had been district attorney since 2010 and had faced a number of controversies about her decisions and prosecutorial style. Those included a 2010 fatal police shooting of Caroline Small and unarmed of two. Wow. A graphic dash cam showed a barrage of bullets fired by two Glenn County officers spread across the windshield of Small's car. Johnson was accused of favoring the local police and steering the local grand jury that cleared the officers. In 2018, Johnson faced additional questions after one of the officers involved in Small's death, Corey Sasser, shot and killed his estranged wife and her male friend after Sasser had been arrested for domestic violence and released on bond. But neither of those cases drew the national attention and heat that the Aubrey case would bring because she went too god darn far. In May 2020, 
when the disturbing video went viral that showed Travis McMichael, who is white, fatally shooting Aubrey, who is black, the case and Johnson's decision the hours and the days after the killing faced the scrutiny of national spotlight. Questions quickly surfaced about the manner in which Johnson rescued her office, uh, I mean, recused her office after the shooting and whether she had followed state guidelines for, in, for the process. Johnson at the time said she welcomed the review and maintained that she had done nothing wrong. Of course she would. But a year later, reports that Carr's office was presenting evidence before a Glenn County grand jury about the case intensified speculation in Brunswick that Johnson could be in trouble. The grand jury met over several sessions this summer, and Carr's office listed 16 witnesses that it called or was ready to call. This included George E. Barnhill, the district attorney from the neighborhood Wayward Waycross Circuit. At Johnson's behest, Barnhill last year had reviewed evidence the day after Aubrey was killed and quickly determined that no apparent crime had been committed. So I guess she said, well, let's put this dude back on uh, the stand and let him repeat that since these folks, uh, you know, is going to just be after me. Just days after his review, Johnson officially notified Carr that she had recused her office. And she steered the AG's office to appoint Barnhill. Carr had no knowledge of Johnson and Barnhill's early interaction when he appointed Barnhill as a conflict prosecutor in 2020. Barnhill would later then have to recuse himself when questions of his own potential conflict surfaced. His son had worked as an assistant prosecutor for Johnson, had worked with Greg McMichael, and had been involved in an earlier case involving Mc, um, Aubrey. So you see, this was a cesspool full of filth that, again, the dominant society tries to cover up whenever they mistreat a black body. This is what has to happen. This apartheid has got to stop. And I want to commend the judicial system for standing up and doing the right thing. And you see, it was that sequence of events that later became an embarrassment for Carr and his office. And because of Johnson's actions in the case, the attorney general charge changed a policy. It no longer accepts informal suggestions from a local DA when they have a conflict of interest about who the attorney general should appoint to handle a case. At a virtual press concert, a prompt conference, I'm sorry, after Johnson's indictment, Aubrey's mother and father praised Carr for his office's work on uh, the case and both said that the Attorney General kept in close contact with them the, during the grand jury proceedings. Ahmaud Aubrey's life matters, said Ben Crump, the family's attorney. That's what I read when I read that indictment. It expressly stated she showed favor and affection for the killers. You know, can you imagine, y'all, you know, all through history, this is what has been happening to black and brown bodies, especially, especially automatically when we go seeking uh, justice, when we've been killed unjustly, how to process. So it's not really individuals um, that is almost a problem. Yes, they're the problem, but systemic madness, systemic Supremacy, white supremacy, um, has been live and full effect on us. It's the systemic racism that allowed this shit right here to 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 go on. I mean, uh, it's sad. 
There are several members of the legal community who question Johnson's indictment. It is just not even close, in my opinion, to alleging a crime against Jackie Johnson in this case, criminal defense attorney Samuel uh, Don Samuel said. I'm just shocked that the attorney, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that the attorney general would think that this indictment even comes close to being a legitimate indictment against a district attorney. Really, really. See this arrogant and pompous spirit. See this 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 shit you gotta contend with? Samuel was particularly critical about the obstruction charge that said Johnson told officers not to arrest Travis McMichael on the day of the shooting. I will never waver from that position that a DA who uses caution and says I want to finish the investigation before I make arrests is in fact doing her job, not committing a felony in Georgia. He said, need to open the books on him. Open the books on him. You know, because when you smell a rat, it must be some cheese. Bring out all the rats. Johnson's indictment comes just weeks before of the Ahmaud Arbery murder trial against McMichaels and a third man, William Roddy Bryant, is set to begin in Glenn County Courthouse. The stakes for Brunswick and the state of Georgia couldn't be higher with the case expected to draw national attention. Officials are preparing for potential protests in Brunswick. The state is on its third DA's office uh, acting as conflict prosecutor since Johnson stepped aside. If the state's COVID-19 outbreak doesn't delay the case, prosecutors from Cobb County um, or District Attorney's Office are expected to begin in Brunswick on October 18th. And that's will be when the jury selection um, is called. So, you know, let me say this. Again, shout out um, for um, the people stepping up, Attorney General, and doing the right thing, uh, the grand jury is what who indicted her. And I think that they show good faith. And I think that the Georgia, the Georgia Attorney General, Chris Carr, did an excellent job. This, this, this is probably, uh, probably unprecedented in Georgia. Because they've been used to doing things a certain way down there in the South. And the North is just more sneakier. But definitely, definitely in the South where they can be blatant and brazen with the racism, as you can see. So good luck to all of y'all. And hopefully we can um, see some strides when you start holding people accountable. That's all. That's all. And um, tell me what y'all think. Leave your comments. Tell me what y'all think about this Glenn County, um, you know, prosecutor, the, uh, the attorney general. Tell me what you think about the grand jury's uh, decision to indict her. What y'all think about it? Maybe you feel the same way this uh, other attorney said. I think he's this, he said it's a bad call. I don't think so. All right. I look forward to hearing from you. See you in the next.